quilters. Today's show is all about assembling the quilt top for our pattern in this AQS AQ Quilt Along series. Stay tuned to see exactly what we're gonna do today, as well as getting all of our tips and tricks. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. And I'm Erica Potker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert. All right, welcome to part three of the Stars in the Crown AQS AccuQuilt Along. Today's super exciting because we're gonna start putting our blocks together to create rows for the top of our quilt. I can hardly wait. That's right. Now we will have live question and answer all throughout the show with AccuQuilt's operation manager, our one and only Mrs. Katie Hackney. As Yay, moderator. Katie, thanks Welcome for being back here. again. Happy to be here. It's been fun sitting in and, and helping out, but Emily will be back next week. She will. All Katie right. And I had a little party last week. You did. We oh, saw yeah, it. We saw it. It was great. All right, be sure to ask any questions you have in the comments section from wherever you stream our show, and Miss Katie will relay them to us. That's right. Now, quilters, in case you missed it, the last show for this Quilt Along series was part two, and while Pam and Emily were off playing at the AQS Daytona Beach show, our operations manager, Miss Katie, here and I, we ran the ship, right? Along with the rest of the team. So we put together the star blocks and we cut and sewed those quarter square triangle blocks. Which are so pretty. Aren't they though? They're so pretty. Now before that, we kicked off the quilt along with a show on February 1st. It was all about the pattern and the fabrics. Then we got started with part one to make the units for our star blocks. That's right. Now it's helpful to watch the shows in order before you get started yes. with the Stars and the Crown Throw Quilt. So be sure to check it out. You can find all the shows on AccuQuilt's video gallery on the website, on our Facebook page, or on our YouTube channel. And if you're just joining us today, it's still not too late to join. Just no. get, get some fabric. We That's can right. Start. That's right. Now, if you're posting pictures on social media like Instagram, be sure and use that hashtag AQSOS and when you post pictures of your project. That's right. You'll also want to be sure and join the Facebook group. Are you ready? AQS Quilting Project Parade. If you're not already a member, it's a big website that a Facebook page that AQS sponsors. Yes, and it's really fun. All right, now let's get started by taking a look at the blocks that we finished on last week's show. And I'm gonna start, and I missed sewing, it was so fun. <laughs> okay, so this is the first, this is my star block. And these were the ones we made um, a couple of weeks ago. Yep, yep. And then here is a sample of my um, half square tri or quarter square triangle blocks. That's right. You Look were it's fun. You were organized. You got your sewing done before you headed to Daytona. I did. <laughs> and so I got mine done. I've got my two blocks here. Oh, Greg is going to show Greg us is right over here. Show us over here. I have Excellent. them for you. Okay. And we will now. Oh, there's there's there my star. Go. There's my quarter square triangles. A little grunge in there to make me happy. <sighs> make me happy too. Okay. All right, so now we're both ready to lay out our quilt tops as soon as we cut out our side setting triangles. Right. Now, Eric and I are both using the GoCube Mix and Match 8 inch block for the project. Right. So that means we're going to be using the Go Setting Triangles 8 inch finish die. Here, let me grab it for us, Erica, so okay. we can talk about it. Oh, sounds good. Um, for our side and setting triangles. That's right. And you'll see this is a 10 by 24 die. It's going to fit in either a go cutter or a go big electric cutter. Right. But if you're making one of our smaller sizes, the four, five, and six inch size setting triangle dies are on six by 24 inch dies. So those will fit through any of the cutters, including the go me. That's right. All right. And this particular die has actually two side setting triangles right. and then one corner setting triangle. All right, so Erica, do you wanna talk about lengthwise screen? Yes, now last week, uh, those of you that were here last week, we already cut out our corner pieces because we were already using that shape. So you can grab those now. 
hang on to them. And we're gonna talk about the side setting triangle pieces. So the trick with those is all about lengthwise grain. It is. Now the lengthwise grain is that tight weave on the fabric and you're gonna wanna have it run parallel to these lengthwise blades. So let me grab some fabric. Right, Imagine and so that's that. like your selvage edge. Yes, so okay. I actually have some, so, here, let's have find some it here. some selvage edge there. I do. I do. All right, so I'm gonna lay it here so Mr. Greg can see. So if I were cutting these with this fabric, here's that salvage edge. Right. So this is the lengthwise grain, that's what you're looking for. Yes. And you wanna be parallel to the lengthwise blade. And Erica, why does that matter? That's the tightest weave of your fabric and it's perfect for the outside edge of your quilt. And that's really why we designed these setting triangle dies the way that we did, so that that lengthwise grain, the tight grain of your fabric is gonna run the same direction as those lengthwise blades. It's gonna give you that tight weave on the outside of your quilt or your block. Right, so I'm gonna give Erica this die yes. and she's gonna cut her yes. um, side triangles. And I'm gonna talk about without the die, you can do complicated math to determine the size for this. Yes. Now, if you're making the eight inch cube version, remember that there are rotary cutting directions in, for the intro blog post for both AQS and AccuQuilt that have the directions for cutting these without a die. Keep in mind that when you cut a square and then cut it in half and cut it in fourths, it's gonna put that bias edge on the outside of your quilt. So you need to take extra care to make sure you don't stretch the outside edge. That's right, right. now I, I confused my cutter. I got my die in and then I pulled it back out. Don't so do that. It, I know, and I, it, it, it <laughs> and it made sound over you. Now I've got a little extra over here. Now if you haven't heard Pam and I talk about this little extra fabric before, you do not want to take it and put it over the top of your mat. No. You do not want to put it under. You just want to kind of roll it up very loosely off on the side. It's not going to get hurt and nobody, nobody cares. It's going right. to be just fine. Yep. Remember, our dies are only going to cut where there's fabric in a mat. That's right. That's right. So a great added benefit to using the go setting triangles is that it's designed to put that lengthwise grain on the outside. Now, we talked about this a little bit in last week's show, that there was an error in the cutting instructions in the original patterns. There was. So that's been corrected, so be sure you download the more updated copy for those corrected fabric prep measurements. So basically what I did was to put the mat over there so I can tell what I'm doing, was to measure, get this extra out of the way, um, to measure a quarter inch on either side of the shape, just you like hold that up rough for cutting me. for any one, any of our dies. You measure a quarter inch and a quarter inch. And if I hadn't already cut four of my side setting triangles, I could have fan folded over the top. Right. I would have cut four layers that would have given me all eight that I need for this project in one cut. Right, and so. look how fast it went, Erica. I mean, there so was no fast. math involved. You just laid fabric down on the die and you could have cut all eight in one That's pass. right, that's right. Okay. All right, now I've already cut my side triangles. So now I think we're ready to kind of talk about how we're gonna put it together. That's right. Now, Katie, before we jump in, Yes. I can see the I can see the look on your face. Do we have some questions? We do. So Deb C is new and she wants to know, do we need to square up our blocks to eight and a half before sewing them? Oh, so I'm gonna show you a fun thing. So this is a block that I made, Deb. I had not square it up. I cut all the pieces correctly. I sewed a perfect quarter inch seam. And now I don't have to worry about squaring it up. And right here in the edge, we have those quarter inch seam allowance already built in. So no, if you're cutting with our dies and you're cutting on the lengthwise grain and you sew with a quarter inch seam, you don't have to do any of that. However, if you're not, or if you have some pieces that are sticking out, you'll wanna go ahead and lay just those down those. and just trim those. So yeah. if you're rotary cutting, if you've got anything that's yes. out of whack, go ahead and give those a little, a little trim. 
All right, what else, Katie? Joe wants to know when you're using the die and you want to cut only one shape on the die, yes. can, you, can you use a smaller mat? Absolutely, you yes. can. Yes, absolutely. In fact, when can. I was cutting my corners, mm -hmm. um, I'd already cut my sides, and so I just used a 10 by 10 mat on I that did fabric. The same thing. Yep. And then I, did I was the same just thing. ready to go. So you can always use a smaller mat to, to cover one shape. Just don't use a bigger mat than the die. Like, for example, if you're using a 6 by 12 die, don't put like a 10 by 24 mat on it. That mat's going to shimmy as it goes through the cutter. Right and it's gonna move that fabric. Yeah. What else, Katie? One last question. Yeah, no worries. Bonnie, I think, is working a little bit ahead, and she wants to know if you can repeat the sizes of strips that are used for flange binding. Oh, yes. You need two sizes of strips. You need to cut one and a half and cut one and three quarters. And there are two dies for that. That's right. And we're going to talk about that next week. Right. But I know a lot of you have been sneaking so way many. ahead on this. <laughs> so and many. You know what? I understand because these stars, I think they're a little addictive. They're yeah. so fun yeah. to put together. And we've both just had a blast. Right. And don't forget, if you have questions, put them in the comment section and Miss Katie will stop us and we will answer yes. your questions for you. Yeah. Okay, should we lay out some blocks? Let's do. Do you want to use the design wall? I'm going to. Okay. I'm loving it. So once you have everything ready, it's time to lay out your top. And it really helps to have a design light wall like we have on the back wall, but you can use whatever you have handy. Like if you're going to use your big cutting mat or maybe the dining room table. No one eats there anyway. <laughs> and even your bed, okay? Now, I'm going to show you. I'm going to get my stuff. I'm so excited, Erica. Get your I can pieces. I know. stand it. This is really okay. fun. And I think that's where we just can't stand it and we have to put it all together. And I know that a lot of people have put theirs up. So, Right. Boy, Erica's been, this is Erica's from home. She's been making some fun things uh, when pigs fly, right? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, quilters, as I lay my pieces up on the design wall, oh my goodness, make sure you have a pattern. Yes, use right. your pattern. Now, remember, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, our pig did fly. He did. <laughs> um, these blocks are set on point. That's why we're going to use our setting triangles. That's right. So then the next row would be here. Oh. <sighs> So happy. So it's going to start to take place because now you're going to add your setting tri your uh, quarter square triangle. Yes. This is going to give us that secondary design that is so fun and frames out your star in the center. Right. So I'm actually going to add then my little side setting triangles. And Erica, just for you, I think I might pin today. Well, you know what? Pinning helps when you're doing this, and here's why. Um, if you are sewing your row, we're sewing our rows, you know, at that angle, and we're not necessarily used to sewing that direction. No, you not also want to make sure that you have those side setting uh, triangles facing the right direction. That's really the tricky part. So, you know, get your quarter square triangles facing the right way inside, get your setting triangles facing the right way on the outside and from there really it's a lot of it's a lot of chain piecing and that's what's so fun okay so notice how i'm laying these out i'm following my pattern so that these pieces meet oh nope there goes the other see? way look i the there. words were no more out of my mouth and there we go there see and then hold please and Sometimes this is, she forgets to listen to me Sometimes, <laughs> a lot. Katie, while Pam's building her, her quilt, that's right. Do we have any questions? Yes, um, Lisa said she's far behind on making this quilt. But well, she Lisa, wants, it's okay. She wants to know if there's any tips for getting her points perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna tell you when, here when we were sewing these um, quarter square triangles together, or half square triangles, these are flying geese. Right. So we're going to sew one side, and Erica presses it open, but I press it away, and then sew the other side. And then when you go to put them together, um, you want to make sure that the point is on top so that they match. So when I was sewing these pieces together, I had my flying geese uh, face fabric side down, right? So yes. the right sides yes. together. 
and then I can sew those black. And there was a picture, a little bit better close-up picture of that in last week's blog post um, while it went through the needle because what happens when you go on, let me. Oh, here, I have some little pieces. Yeah, no, so there's right, some right here. I've got some. Oh, do you? Got okay. some. I don't know where we want, what's, where's the best way to um, Greg, show right something behind small. you if you want to show Erica. Okay, so here's our flying geese unit. And you can see where, I've pressed it open, you can see where that point is right there. Okay, you can see the point. Oh, that's a great shot. I run my, I sew with the flying geese on top so that I can make sure that my needle is just on the other side. So it would be this way, going under my sewing machine. That it's on this side of that point. And that means that when I open it up, I've got my point. Yeah. See how that works? And then when we sew our bottom on, that's how we're gonna, our quarter inch down here, that's how we're gonna get those perfect points. Yeah. And it really helps to go back and watch those shows. So see, you can see that secondary design coming through on yes. my quilt. I know, okay, so I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna sew the next row together. And I think, Erica, are you sewing? So I've got one row done. I was just sitting here and chit-chatting. So if I lay out on the table here, I got my corner. Boy, we're all over the place today. We are, do you wanna go on my side and lay it out or are you good to right there? I, I'll reach over my machine, I think. Okay. That way we've got the overhead so everybody can see. Okay. So here's- While you're doing that, we do have a question on the design wall that we're utilizing and where we get got that from. Uh, you can get them like at fabric stores, you can get them online. Erica, how, um, this, this one, one is by Fon, made by Fonz and Porter. Um, I really like it. It's got a, it's plastic on the other side and it has a two inch grid printed on right. it. So it helps you keep your blocks straight when you're laying out on it. But then it's kind of a flannelly side. side. Um, I've used, stuck, stuff I've used all kinds of different things, I guess. I've used, I've seen people use flannel sheets. I saw somebody use a plastic picnic table because it's got it's the plastic on one mm -hmm. side and then it's that fuzzy stuff. You want the fuzzy stuff so that it can um, stick to it. That's right. That's right. I know that sounds funny. All right, what else, Katie, while we're sewing seams here? Um, I'm gonna ask a personal question for you guys. Hi, Katie. <laughs> what are you guys doing with your projects when you're done with them? Oh, we're gonna talk about that next week. Okay. We are. Well, um, I will be here next week. You can watch the show. You can watch. 12 noon central time. I feel like you'll be I in the I, I watch session. the shows. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, Katie is one of our moderators um, for our Tuesdays and Wednesday shows. Are you still gonna do that? Yes, I okay. am. So she's the one that when I call them bindy clips, corrects me and says they are what are those called? Wonder Clips, right? Yes. That we sell clips. on our website. She's that Katie. She's that Katie. Oh, I've All got right. the baby lock this week. It cuts yes. my thread for me. I okay, love that. So before you ask, yes, I'm using the FAF and Erica is using our baby lock here in the Dream Studio. We are grateful to our sponsors who have provided us with um, machines. Normally I find so on my brother machine, but I was a little discombobulated this morning and forgot to bring it. So, which I mean, I had to go home to find my, to bring the design wall. Yeah. So. It's been one of those kind of days. Okay, so. so I don't have as much space. I'm kind of doing one at a time here. I keep hitting my touch screen. There you go. So I'm just gonna flip this over. There you go. We started in opposite corners, and I don't know why I started in the corner I do, because I always oh, start yes, it the way that you why, do. Boys. We're in opposite corners. We're on we opposite usually corners. Start in. They're just seeing if we can sew on both sides of the table. It's very true. And on multiple machines. And don't forget, quilters, this is no rush. You no. know, even if you just have your blocks sewn, be sure and share them with us. We'd love to see it. Or maybe you just have your fabric and you're like, what, which should I use as my accent fabric? Or what should I use for my blocks? 
We just want to, we just want you to sew with us. We just, yeah, that's right. We're just having fun together. Okay, so my next one will be a star block. Right. And quilters, this is not the last quilt along we're going to have. It's a secret, it's but a don't secret, tell It's a secret, but the next one is. But there's a total of five for this year. Yeah, which I think is so fun. And we're just and gonna have the greatest time. Next one, if memory serves me correctly, starts April 5th. Is that the right yes, date, Yes, I believe that, that is correct. She's like, why did you ask me that question? No, I think I really remember that. I, so. I'm pretty sure. We have a question for you guys. We have an answer. Valerie wants to know if there's any tips for storing the 10 by 24 dies. Can you lay them flat? Yes, okay, watch this, Valerie. <laughs> We get this question a ton. So you want it to store like this or like this. You don't want to store them one on top of each other. The weight of the dies from the top are going to damage the blades of the dies on bottom. This applies to all of your dies, okay? Now at home, I don't have a big enough space width deep this way. Right. So I store my dies like this. And then here's a fun fact. They're your dies, you may write on them. So at home, across the top right here, I take a Sharpie and I write eight inch setting triangles or whatever the die is. So then when it's stacked, I don't have to be finding the label, which is right here on the side. I don't have to find that label, I already know what it is. Oh, this is that one. And then I can just do it. So that's a great question. We got another one for you specifically, Pam. Hi. There were some questions on your ladybug fabric and how you made sure that they were all going the direction that you wanted them to okay. go. First of all, it's Tula Pink, bless her ever loving heart. Um, and look at, here's the fabric. So it's already like this. So when I cut strips of it, it's just gonna be perfect. So I, I, it's not really an ombre fabric, but it is so that if I cut with the fabric strips, then I get a little bit of everything. And it's Tula Pink's Painted Ladies. Yes. Tiny Beasts. You should get it. It comes in backgrounds of different colors. Sorry. Oh, this. Okay. Not. And I love it. It's really out of my, Wheelhouse, are you okay over there? Yes, I am. My okay. thread was cutting really short. All right, Katie, do you have other questions? Yes, okay. uh, just a clarification question for cutting those setting triangles. Does the selvage edge go with the longest edge of the triangle? Yes. Yes. By yes. Jove, they've got it. I know, I, then, I love it. Then to follow up on that, if they don't have the setting triangles die, how do they cut those out with the rotary cutter? What do they need to do? Erica wrote them in the blog, is that right? So, right, so that's gonna be, you're gonna find that in the rotary cutting directions for the eight inch size, if you were, um, if that's the size that you're using. And those were in our introduction blog post, which ran for us on February 1st. Right. Um, AQS's blog ran on January 30th. Right. And, and you can always, well, if you have different sizes, is. you can Google that. Mr. Google yep. yep. There's knows there. how to do that. But basically, you're going to be cutting a large square, and Top you're going to be half. chopping it in half. Oh, my heavens. Are you good over there? No, this bobbin is all icky. Oh, I hate icky bobbins. Do you need a clean one? I do. Hold, please. Have See, this is what happened. Oh, well, it's not going to fit in your machine. You'll probably need one. No, I think it will. When you guys started to do sew your rows together, did you start with the corner star and the star Blank first? I, well, do you want a, here, I have one that has fabric. The one that with, has thread on it yes. already? Yes, I th didn't know what you wanted me to do. I'm sorry, Katie, yes? So when you started to sew your rows, did you start with that corner star yep. and, the, and the corner yes. tri triangle? Yes, and then I'm gonna move down and do the last corner. And you wanna do that, set the, the side setting triangles on either side of that first star first and then do your corner that worked that's how i did mine yeah and it lined up perfectly yeah yeah so that's how i would suggest right 
do so, it. Yep, yeah, and I'm just pinning them. And then when we get to the part, if you're a quilter and you like to nest your seams, you're going to um, press towards the setting triangles, okay, and the quarter square triangles, and that way your seams will nest. But the lovely, which is what I did here, but Erica just pressed hers all one way and then all this direction this way and all this way, and then they're still gonna nest. Still I are. like it when they nest because then it lays nice and flat. Yes. Okay. And to that helps you get those blocks perfectly put together. Right, right. I may give up on. Are you good? No, we're having issues over here, but that's all right. Do you want to sew on my machine for a minute? I might. Okay. But you're busy. Oh, I'm just pinning in honor of Erica. All right, Katie, what else do you got over there? There's some questions on that go big shelf catcher. Talk to me about it. So they want to know if it's sold on our website. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes and no. This whole cabinet is sold on our website. This shelf is attached to the cabinet. And Brock, I promise I'll be careful. The, shell, the cabinet is on wheels, and then look, the sides collapse. So if you have limited space, you can move it around and then lock your wheels, and then you can go like this. Now, let me tell you a little something, quilters. When that go big die comes out of the cutter, it's just gonna stop. If there's a table there of any kind, it, the die will come through and it will stop. That's right. So it's doing work while you are checking cookies in the oven or answering the phone or seeing what the FedEx man is bringing you from AccuQuilt. That's right. Okay. It just needs to be on a table long enough. Um, when I was in Daytona, a quilter was telling me, she said the first time she ran a Go Big die through, it went into her trash can. <laughs> Because she put the go big at the end of her table and she ran it through and she goes, I'm watching it, I'm so excited. And she goes, and then it ended up in her trash can. So long as the table you have is long enough, it will come through. That's right. Okay, Katie, what's the next question? I feel like while I stand here. Yeah, um, what is, do you guys have any tips for how to not lose your points when you're sewing the rows together? Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, the first one, Anybody can, anybody got a guess what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna say pins. Erica's gonna say pins and I'm gonna tell you, can we get a good shot of this? This, you wanna sew from the b pieced block to the setting triangles. Because here you can see where your pieces have ended. Now when you're sewing your rows together, you have to go, you know, you're gonna be every other kind of thing. So you just want to keep an eye on it. And again, on those start point ends, you're gonna see that intersection point. Yes. If we look at the back, here we'll, we'll go again. Yes, we're gonna look game. at the back. We look at the back and I've pressed my seam open, you can still see where that point is. Right. So again, you're, if you make sure your needle goes right above that, maybe, yeah. a, maybe a thread, you're gonna be golden. Yeah, and pressing really does make a difference. It does. You it people does. who are sloppy pressers, you need to fix that. Well, and here's the thing, we've talked about it before, but there's a difference between pressing and ironing. Yes. Press is just a touch with your iron. That's Ironing right. is what you do to shirts. Because if you iron your fabric, it's gonna stretch it. And we never, ever, ever, ever use steam. <laughs> Pam and I are anti-steam. Now I know there are quilters out there who steam, and right. not to offend you all, but we, it will, it can distort your fabric. It can cause right. stretch. Right, it's just and stretching through it. If you're using one of these wool pressing mats, which I really adore, yes. these wool pressing mats, and we do sell them on our website, that steam will go right through it onto whatever it is sitting on. Yes. So if you have it sitting on your rotary cutting mat, like I do next to me, you're gonna warp your rotary mat. And you know what? 
We don't want to do that. You're going to be cranky about that. That's going to make us cranky. Are you Absolutely. able to sew now? Yeah, I got it oh, fixed. Good. Do you want to put your top down? I am very, oh, I am very good at troubleshooting my machines usually. She's very good. Now, why you might ask? Well, because I learned on a difficult machine. But yeah. see, it just, I, I didn't cut my thread long enough and it did the same thing. I'm not used to sewing on this one. I'm gonna give myself that as an out. You totally should. All right, Katie, what other questions do you have for us? Um, we had a question on the next sew along that we're doing and if we will give them time to get all the stuff that they need it's to do it. It's a secret. It's a secret. Yes, we will give you plenty of time. We're gonna do a little, hey, this is what we're doing in a couple of weeks. Get all your fabric ready, use your stash. I think there's a week. Katie, ask me if, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think our intro show is on, oh well. The fifth. The fifth. The fifth believe, and yeah. then we'll start sewing, cut, we'll start cutting the next week. Yes. Right. We'll give you an entire week. So we're week gonna to give you, you plenty you of time. But finish what you have now. Yes, focus on this. You know what, I have just had the best, Pam and I have both had just the best time seeing what everybody has been doing with their quilts. We have, and I have coveted so many of your fabrics. Oh, ever so Holy many. Holy smokes. And um, we just go in and comment. It's just fun to see what everybody's done. And I was laughing because I think it was, Erica, I think it was like week two that people had already finished theirs. Yes. 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 And Eric and I, we had not already finished ours. We had not, but you know what? This is kind of an addictive pattern. It's super fun to work on. Right. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to finish it and do some quilting, because I have a plan that's different than the pattern for mine. So. And um, we'll talk about that. There you go. All right, Katie, what else, sweetie? When you're cutting for the fabric, do you starch the fabric or is it recommended? To I never starch the fabric because that starch is wet. Yeah, I don't either. Um, some people are big starchers and I kind of think you got to either starch it all or none. And I, I, if you have a fabric that you're working with that's a really soft fabric, maybe it's a little bit looser weave than your other fabrics, there you might want to do that. Um, that that looser weave, that softer fabric. I do like sewing with, for, what, for lack of a better word, crunchy fabric. I like the good crisp fabric and that's why I don't <laughs> usually pre-wash my fabric. Cause I, I like I never pre -wash, that, the body. No one has ever called it crunchy before and I think that's hilarious. I think that was a term from Madeline. I think that oh, there was, we go. I think that was our friend Madeline who. Okay. So, um, then the next question people are gonna ask is, do you pre-wash your fabric? And I'm gonna tell you no. Now, having said that, um, over the summer I made a travel quilt by our good friend, who designed that, Katie? She was on our show. Travel quilt. She had a travel quilt. She had a travel quilt in, off the top uh, of me. Stephanie Jacobson? No. no. Thanks, yes. Thank Jen you. Belknap. Yes. Good job, Brock, for the win. So I used our winding ways dye to make this really cool travel quilt. And it was all blacks and whites, except for the center, which was purple. And I washed that purple fabric with a color catcher. Because what I didn't want it to do was bleed onto the rest of the gray and black fabric. I, if you're using a red, uh, it's oftentimes a good idea to pre-wash that fabric. And I did, for the first time in, I don't know, probably years, pre-wash fabric when I made my, um, what was that one that you designed for us? The North Carolina Star Quilt with oh, the yes. lovey-dovey pink colors. Katie did that. She's the one Katie inspired us to make. Yes. Because I had those dark pinks. I did too, I washed mine as well. But here's the other thing. I also had an Essex linen and I knew that it was gonna be more, it was, going to be prone if it was going to shrink it was going to shrink more than the cotton would so i just washed all of it ah there you go separately but and then i pressed it but i didn't you start your steam. i didn't i okay. didn't although if at that point you want to you certainly could yeah but there, i mean i know a lot of people wash their fabric every time i'm going to tell you fabric if you're buying good cotton quality fabric cotton fabric 
you're you're going to be golden. Yeah. All hey, right, Katie. What else? So Jacqueline's wondering if a silicone mat underneath her wool mat would help protect her surface. Yes. At yes. The end. Okay. Some people put them on a cookie tray or a TV tray. Um, I put it on top of my old ironing little board that I had that was, in fact, a leftover piece of, of board that we had from an old shelf. And I covered it with batting and some muslin. And that's what I used as a, a little side pressing mat for years until I discovered the wool pressing mats, which are mwah. Okay. okay. I'm ready to do my corner here. Okay, do you wanna, here I can take my, you wanna show them on the design wall? I mean, we can just take down that square. And then you can kind of see how it all plays well, together. And like I said, I started from the opposite corner. I don't know why. It's okay. You can take mine down if you need to. Okay. Or I could just go over the top here. I'll move this. Oh, one. there you go. Okay. And for the love, please don't lose my block, because holy smoke. Well, no, right? I won't lose your block. Right? I mean, I can just see us all. So I'm just putting it up here on this side. Oh, look how pretty that is. <laughs> look. Now, I'm going to go, I want to make sure I get this lined up correctly. And Erica, so here I think we there go. are pins right over there for you. Yes, I saw them. Thank you very much. So here we go. So you can see this, now I know. This is how I want this to line up. This is gonna line up here. So I'm gonna peel this back. And I'm just gonna take a moment right here and put a couple pins in just so that I know where I'm at there. There you go. And then Erica, I think I am done with this row and then we'll kind of talk about, um, now that kind of people have the idea of you know, how to press it and stuff will continue on. Are you good over there? Yeah, I'm good. I love it. All right. What, what I did for, so what I'll do for my first block, just to make sure that I'm absolutely lined up, is I lined up my first seam first. So I came over here to where I've pressed my seam so I can nest them right there, and I pinned that. Then I backed up to put my first one here because on this end. And then I typically will just do one along the way. Right, you just want to stop along the way, make sure you're all lined up. Right. Because you don't want to be sewing the whole row together and then go, right. oh, wait. And I don't excessively pin, and you really don't need to do this. You can just... Go ahead and do it as you go. But there's a certain feeling of security. And again, if you, I came to sewing through garment sewing, which means I'm more of a pinner than people who start sewing as quilters. Yeah, I was a quilter, I was never a garment sewer. Yep. And it's kind of funny. All right, so I'm gonna press mine and then I'm gonna hang it back up on the wall and we're gonna let Erica sew her section together. Yes. Because this is truly just the concept you're gonna use over and over again to sew your rows together, which is kind of fun. And while we're doing this, Katie, what kind of questions do we have going on? Okay, so Marsha, I believe is how she says her name. I apologize if that's not correct. So she let her husband help her pick what size cube to use. This was her first time using the cube and he told her to use the smallest. So she wants to know when pressing, she normally presses to the dark side, but she also likes pressing open and she wanted to confirm. She thought Erica had said to press open. Press open if you're using that four or five or six inch cube. Okay. Yep. And, and that was nice of her husband to pick the smallest size <laughs> cube. Yeah, the reason is um, those pieces, there's just gonna be so much bulk. Right? Yes. I mean, holy now, smokes. I have seen some people's four inch ones and I actually think I'm gonna make this in a four inch size just because In your spare time so are you gonna cute. do that, really? Well, it's so cute, Pam. It's darling. I, cute, cute speaks okay. to me. So when I pressed mine here, I pressed towards the quarter square triangles here and then the um, setting triangles. 
So I, I press my seams here, okay? So I'm gonna do it here on this, and then I'm gonna pin it just like Erica did so that I can sew my rows together. So I'm gonna press it away here. Basically, you're pressing it away from the blocks and then your seams will nest. All right, Katie, do we have more questions here while we're almost finished sewing? Erica's almost done with her row. Um, so I have a comment actually from Jean S. She said, Pam, I enjoyed your class in Daytona. Oh, Jean, thank you so much. We had a great oh, time. She said she learned a lot. We did learn lots and it was fun. And Jean, I want you to share your table topper when it's done because it was really fun. It was fun to see everybody's different fabrics. It's like the so long here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun to see everybody's fabrics. Well, and you discover different fabrics then too. You know, I discovered looking at the Facebook group, a tulip pink fabric in that same line as your ladybugs that has hedgehogs. Yes. And I had not seen that because I think that my local quilt shop, I may or may not have gone, um, once I found out the name of it, has already run already out. sold out of it, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. But one of our quilters was nice enough to send me a link to where I could find it. There you go. There you go. Y'all are very helpful. I do. All right, try not to fall over. Listen, I'm sewing my shoes on. I'm not sure how to do that. All right. All right, so now my rows are all pressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew the rows together and just like Erica, I'm gonna pin. And then quilters, this row then comes down here and this is the corner here. So basically you're just gonna take the two halves and sew them together. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be super easy. Super easy. Yeah, okay. All right, now once you're, oh here, I'll stand here, then I can just have it. <laughs> So once your rows are all sewn together, pat yourself on the back, right? Yep, absolutely. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to cut and add the border to the outside. So if we see the lovely Katie over there, you can, can we see the border on that quilt behind Katie? Thank you. So it's that bright pink border, see, look at that. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how to cut borders and then we're gonna talk about sewing them together. Erica, what else are we talking about? We're also gonna talk about how to quilt, how to quilt it, how you might wanna quilt it. You know, we've got the example of how these samples were quilted, but there's all different ways, right? right. So we're gonna talk about quilting ideas. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna talk about binding. You know, we had somebody who mentioned flange binding earlier. Right. We're gonna revisit that. We're gonna talk about different binding techniques, different dyes that you can use. Right different things you can do to bind your quilt. So the pattern calls for a two inch border mm -hmm. and then a binding that matches your border, but no quilting police. No so quilting you police. can do this however you want to. You can right. pick whichever fabric. You can even do it scrappy. There's so many ways and we're gonna so talk about that. And because sometimes I don't like to follow patterns, um, I'm actually gonna bring mine in next week and I'm doing a little bit different on my quilt. So think about putting your top together mm -hmm. and then think about, do you like that size? Do you wanna make it bigger? Right, right. Do you wanna add additional borders? We're gonna talk about it all. And okay. I'm already thinking of, I, we, had, <laughs> we had some of the similar thoughts and I'm trying to decide which fabric I wanna use how. So right. there's so many ways to personalize it. Right. Katie, I feel like this is a good time to see if we've got some yes. questions. We got a few more questions before we sign off okay. here. Okay. So do you sew an exact quarter inch yes. seam or a scant quarter inch seam? I, I sew an exact, so does Pam. And we have a quarter inch foot yep. that helps us with that. Yes, but whenever you're starting a new project, it does not hurt to use the thread you're gonna use, the fabric you're gonna use to sew your first seam and then to measure it. Right. And I think we talked about this last week, but when you're measuring a seam, use your cl clear acrylic ruler. It's really hard to see because it's yeah, clear. It's but acrylic. go ahead and lay it down and then measure because once you've pressed it. Because if you hold it up in front of your eyeballs, you're not gonna get a good true measurement. Yeah. 
So yeah. you can see that is spot on. Into America. Yeah. Boy, that was good luck. Too, I know. Because Look at you. Who knows if I had picked a one. I know. If it had been late at night. All right, Katie, what night. else? Do you backstitch at the beginning and end of your rows when you're sewing? I do. Yes. I do. I do. Because so many times I have gone to put my rows, put the sections of rows all together and something has started already to unravel or I'm yes. pressing it out to get it quilted or to lay it out and baste it. And it's just aggravating. So yes, I do. I do. Okay. I've got two more. You're fine. Okay. Um, so someone noticed, Marsha noticed that when you pin Erica, you pin it a slant at the nesting line. Is there any particular reason why, or is that just how you um, do it? You know what? There is. I do that on purpose, Marsha. I can't believe you picked that up. So if I'm doing that, okay. There's that. Word. Let's just say I'm, I'm sewing these, putting these two together. And if my seams are pressed open or if they're pressed to the dark side and I'm nesting, I will pin at an angle because then I'm getting the seam allowance on both sides of that where I, um, the cross seam is. And so I'm holding the step. bottom one in place. I'm holding the bottom side in place and I'm holding, I'm holding both sides of my seam in place that way. Right. And you see how the pin goes through then both sides holding it. So that's one of my quirky little things that I do and you caught me. Then the last question we have is how are you pressing the seams after putting the rows together? Um, so we're, you can either press them in one direction. If you've already pressed your seams open, continue to press them yep. open. Yep. We wanted our seams to nest. So I pressed all of my seams towards, so here's my square blocks. I press all my seams towards the quarter square triangles and the setting triangles. So now this is going this direction, this is going this direction, and now my seams will nest. And the pattern is gonna have you sew uh, direction by rows. So oh, one yes. row will go to the right, the other right. one will go to the left. Again, they're gonna nest. But those seams, those row seams, I like to press those open. I do too. Um, it's going to be easier down the road. Again, it's a bulk thing. It is. And our next step after we get these borders on is quilting. And it's going to be easier for you or your quilter or whoever is quilting your quilt yeah. if you've got those open yeah. and flat. Okay, Katie, what's our last question? Okay. Um, how do you change, sorry, chain stitch, she corrected it, um, and back stitch when doing so? Oh, when you chain piece? Yes. So you're just gonna sew, 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 sew. You get to the end, a quarter an inch back stitch and continue to sew and then add the next piece. Mm -hmm. I sew in about three stitches, then I back stitch and then I continue to sew. So yep. three stitches from the end, back stitch, go to the end, go to the next block, sew in three stitches. So you will have stitch. one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's under the category of better safe than sorry. Right. But I do love to chain piece. And I think that this project is a perfect chain piecing block. Yes. I mean, yeah. you could go to your design wall, pin all, each row together, and then take all of those rows to your sewing machine, sew those rows together, press them all together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We were just kind of demonstrating today. Yeah. All right, quilters, don't forget to take a picture of your progress and share it with all of our social media platforms using hashtag AQSOAPS. And if you haven't yet, be sure you do join that AQS Quilting Project Parade Facebook group so that you can post your pictures and most importantly, see what everybody else is doing as yes. well. And you know what? I just feel like I've made a whole new group of friends. Yes. Yes. So that fun. is really the fun of doing this quilt along and Pam and I are on there answering questions and looking at everybody's fabric yep. and going ooh ah. And we're there long. a couple of times a week. So yeah. like today, Eric and I will post and then we'll go through yep. the comments and we'll look again before we come back next week. That's right. Alrighty. Uh, you'll find us there. Uh, Pam is AccuQuilt Educator Pam Heller. I'm AccuQuilt Erica. There you go. All right, so for more tips and tricks on this section of the Stars and the Crown, you can check out the blog post that I wrote for today, 
and you can check the AQS blog later today as well. You can also go back and rewatch this episode if you want to or any of our others. Now, while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the AccuQuilt blog so you don't miss a single tip or an exclusive tutorial and you can stay up to date with everything we do. And speaking of while you're at our website, yes. you want to request to get text message infos. That's right. Because today we're sending a text message about a secret. So if you've gone to the website at the bottom, um, you can sign up for those SMS. Uh, text messages. Yeah, text messages, because we have something super cool. All right. Well, just before we end part three of our Stars in the Crown throw quilt, we have missed something. We want to announce the winner of today's giveaway. Yes, you want to register for all of our AccuQuilt events because we give away, do giveaways every single event. Today, we have a lucky winner of, get this, $100 in AccuQuilt reward points. Isn't that cool? I'm so excited. <laughs> so the winner is drum roll, please. Heather B. of Wells, Nevada. Congratulations. Congratulations. We're excited. Now don't forget, also on the website, there are plenty of special offers available for you right there. You can also find things at your local retailer. Pam, you've got some more information about right. finding our product. Yep, so get your order in, open a new tab in your browser, type in acuquilt.com slash party to see our current deals and place your order. Now, if you're just getting started with the AccuQuilt and you love making this project, be sure to check with your local AccuQuilt retailer to see if they have an AccuQuilt Go Club that you can join right. to continue on with that. That's right. And there's a store locator on our website so you can check for your closest store. There you go. Well, it is time for us to get ready for our next show. We hope today's show was just what you needed to help you move to the finish line with this fun project. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. To learn more about your quilting craft, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can check out the events page on the AccuQuilt website for more details on upcoming shows. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, visit our blog for exclusive tutorials filled with tips and tricks. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Events page to register for upcoming events. Registering for each event means that you're entered to win a door prize that we'll give away during the show. And be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. Next week, the lovely Eric and I will be helping you finish this quilt. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be revealing the Die to Try series die for March. We can't wait to see you there. <laughs>